greeting or, well, some people are not in the same time zone as California. Greetings, everyone. Greetings, Plymouth family. Greetings to all our family on Zoom. Can we wave to our family on Zoom? And greetings, everyone here in the sanctuary. Where can I set this down? Okay. Hillary, I don't want to mess up your beautiful altar here. So welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining in this time of worship with our church, Plymouth Church, the Jazz and Justice Church. I'm so happy to be here with all of you in worship today. If, if you are joining us for the first time, or if I just haven't had a chance to meet you yet, I'm Reverend Marjorie Matthews, and I serve with gratitude, with great gratitude as the pastor of this beloved community. And I'm happy to be home. Mm. I'm gonna put my mask here. So everyone, today is the third Sunday in the season of Easter. We know Easter is not just a Sunday, it's actually an entire season. And during this season, we hear all these stories about how the risen Christ, the resurrected Jesus, kept appearing and appearing and appearing to his friends and um, showing up in ways and in places that they didn't expect. Today, we get to hear the, the Emmaus story, the story of how Jesus appeared to two of his friends on the road to Emmaus, and Pastor Rena is going to be our preacher today, and she will open the Emmaus story for us. Thank you, Pastor Rena. We are also celebrating communion today. And so we've set our communion table here in the sanctuary. I want to invite all of our family on Zoom, those of you who want to join in the celebration of communion, to set your own little table at home with, you know, crackers or cookies, juice, water, whatever it is you'd like to have for communion later in the service. And so we're going to enter worship today singing a song that we often sing at communion time, Let Us Talents and Tongues Employ. Dave is going to lead us. It's a, it's a joyful song. You can rise and join in singing. The words are in your bulletin. Talents and tongues employ, reaching out with a shout of joy. Bread is broken, the wine is poured. Christ is spoken and seen and heard. Jesus lives again, the earth can breathe again. As the word around loaves abound. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again. As the word around loaves abound. Christ is able to make us one. At his table he set the tone, teaching people to live to bless, love in word and in deed express. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again, as the word around loaves abound. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again, as the word around loaves abound. calls us in, sends us out, bearing fruit in a world of doubt, gives us love to tell, bread to share, God Emmanuel everywhere, oh Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again, pass the word around, loaves abound, Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again, pass the word around, loaves abound, oh Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again, Pass the word around, loaves abound. Jesus lives again, earth can breathe again. Pass the word around, loaves abound. Jamaican, it says here. Very Calypso. Nice. Amen. <laughs> Was that fun? <laughs> We've come for the joy. Oh, speaking of joy, 
Can we all say welcome home to Sister Carolyn Ellison, who is with us all the way from North Carolina, you all? Yeah, and, and can we say welcome home to Sister Gail Dunn, who's with us from Sacramento? <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Ah. So we're going to take a moment now, with that joyful song in our hearts, we're going to take a moment now to, to settle into this time of worship. So I invite you to let yourself fully arrive here. Let yourself fully arrive here. I invite you to like give your attention to your breathing, your precious, precious breath. Maybe you want to lay a hand on yourself, just a gentle hand on yourself. Feel your chest rise and fall with your breathing. Do you hear that bird? Mm. And now let us join our hearts in prayer. Easter God, we come to this time of worship remembering the risen Christ the resurrected Jesus, the one who appeared again and again and again to his friends. We need, O oh God, in these troubling and trigger-happy times, we need your love that appears again and again, your love that, that stands us on our feet steadies every part of us that trembles, summons forth our better selves. Let that love fill us anew in this hour of worship, trusting in you, O oh God, trusting in your love that is powerful and your power that is love. We claim anew the words of the psalmist, and I invite all of you to join me now in those precious words from Psalm 46, repeating each line after me. Be still and know that God is God. Be still and know that God is God. Be still and know that God is. Be still and know that God is. Be still and know. Be still and know. Be still. Be still. Be. Be. Michelle and Stephen are going to bless us with a song now. I understand this is a song that the two of you have sung for many years, and many, Stephen says. And I've also just recently learned that this song is based on a poem by Langston Hughes. Am I right about that? Wow. Amen. We sang this as a part of Street Sounds. We toured all over the world. and shared this message and when we were asked to sing something this week we brilliant mind of stephen thomas yes yes can you hear me i can't hear you now you get to see us in person okay, okay. <laughs> to fling my arms wide in the face of the sun to dance world, world until the quick day is done. Then rest at Pelina beneath the tall tree. Night coming on gently, black like me. Oh, that 
is my dream. That is my dream. That is my dream. That is my dream. That is my dream. That is my dream. That is my dream. That is my dream. That is my dream. Don't you know I want to fling, fling my arms wide in the face of the sun? Dance world, world until the quick day is done. Then rest that pale evening and all slim tree. Night coming on gently, black like me. That is my dream. 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 That is my that is my dream. I'm dreaming about tomorrow i'm dreaming i'm dreaming about today yeah i'm dreaming i'm dreaming about tomorrow i'm dreaming i'm dreaming about today yeah i'm dreaming about tomorrow i'm dreaming i'm dreaming about today yeah i'm dreaming i'm dreaming about tomorrow i'm dreaming i'm dreaming about today yeah yeah, nothing lights a fire like a dream deferred. Nothing lights a fire like a dream Shell, thank you, Stephen. That was beautiful. Gorgeous. Nothing lights a fire like a dream deferred. I'm dreaming about tomorrow. I'm dreaming about today. Mm. We are daring to believe. We are daring to believe. That line, I'm dreaming about tomorrow, I'm dreaming about today, makes me think of all the young leaders, all the young leaders. Here we come. Yeah. Ah, dear ones, it's time to pass the peace. Um, oh, Hillary, I should let you do this. <laughs> Our wonderful worship chairs, Hillary and Lauren, and our former worship co-chair, Cynthia Ovando, they are the ones who usually do this. So I invite all of you to join me as we claim anew those words that are so precious to us in our denomination, the United Church of Christ. The words are in your bulletin. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. In that spirit of welcome, I invite you to first pass the peace to yourselves. Will you lay a gentle hand on yourself and say, peace be with me. Say it again, peace be with me. And say it one more time, peace be with me. And now I invite you to pass the peace to everyone who's gathered here in person and everyone who's gathered on Zoom. Just extend your hands and say, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Amen, amen. 
If you are worshiping with us for the first or the second time today, I'd like to extend an especially warm welcome to you on behalf of our Plymouth family. For those of you who are here in the sanctuary, there are welcome cards. Let's see if I can find one. It's like finding gold. <laughs> they look like this. Oh, I see several people are holding them up. So you're warmly invited to fill that out and that way I can be in touch with you. If you're with us on Zoom, our wonderful Zoom team will post the digital version of the welcome card in the chat for you. Um, we're going to have a few minutes to continue passing the peace to each other. For our family on Zoom, you'll go into breakout groups and you'll have time to say peace be with you and to share just a few words about how you're doing. And for everyone here in the sanctuary, we can rise and greet each other. If you are trying to avoid hugs and handshakes, you can elbow bump or you can air hug. Let us join in the passing of the peace, recognizing the spirit of the risen Christ in each of us and in all this gathered community. Let us greet each other with a sign of peace. Dear ones, shall we return to our seats? I know we're all so happy to see each other. Yes, play us a little music, Dave. Ring the bell for us, Paul. Okay, everyone, we're gonna continue in worship. Our family on Zoom has returned from small groups, so we're going to continue in worship, right? Thank you, Kat. So for Grace Notes today, everyone, I, I'd like to share a little update with all of you. Most of you know that my dear husband, Reverend Bob Matthews, was hospitalized at the beginning of the year and then came home on hospice. And um, for those of you who are not familiar with hospice, doctors refer patients to hospice when they believe the patient has six months, no more than six months to live. So when Bob came home from the hospital, we, we had no idea how much time he might have. We didn't know if he had a few days or a few weeks or a few months. Only God knows these things, right? What I did know is that I wanted to be with him as much as I could for whatever time remained. And so with the support of our church council, our amazing church council, I took a leave of absence from my duties here at the church. And our wonderful pastor emerita, Reverend Lois Mueller, stepped in to coordinate worship and provide pastoral care. And our other Plymouth clergy stepped in to help with preaching and leading prayer time. I'm thankful to Pastor Rena and Reverend Duncan who are doing that today, and to Reverend Susan and Reverend Leslie who did that last Sunday. We've had wonderful guest preachers like Reverend Penny Nixon, who was our preacher on Easter Sunday and preached the house down, amen, amen. And so many people on our church council, I don't have time to thank all of you by name, but so many people on our church council and so many other amazing leaders in this church have stepped forward and stepped in to help while I've been out on leave. I am profoundly grateful to all of you. Bob and I both are profoundly grateful to all of you and to this church. Thank you for all you're doing to lead and serve and bless this community so that Bob and I can have as much time together as possible. You all have blessed us with an invaluable gift. And it's going on four months since I started this leave of absence. I don't know where the time goes. And I'm sure that some of you are wondering, where is she? <laughs> is she coming back? Is, 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 she, is she, you know, when is she coming back? Well, what I, what I want all of you to know, what I want to assure you of in, in, in clear and strong terms today is that I am still your pastor. I have not left. I love this community so much, and I'm definitely coming back, but I'm also learning that coming back is not as clear a process as I had hoped. Um, I thought, 
and you know, this is just total silliness and naivete. But I thought, you know, that I'd choose a firm date and that I'd come back at full capacity and full time and full strength. You all are shaking your head like, poor pastor. <laughs> and instead, I'm learning that coming back means slowly and growing reassuming what duties I can as I can while continuing to care for my dear husband who praise God is still with us <laughs> praise God you know um, praise God we didn't think he'd make it to Valentine's Day and we got to celebrate Valentine's Day we didn't think he'd make it to our wedding anniversary in March he made it to our wedding anniversary. We didn't think he'd make it to Easter. He made it to his birthday earlier this month and to Easter Sunday. So, so being with Bob as much as I can continues to be my priority. But even as I do my best to savor every moment with him that we can savor, to cherish every day, I'm also trying to be present for our church. And so I, um, I preached on Mardi Gras Sunday in February and I preached on Zoom in late March and I was here on Easter Sunday and I'm here again today. Um, I'm hoping to preach at least once next month in May. So in other words, you'll, you'll start seeing a bit more of me, everyone, a bit more of me, not every Sunday, not every church meeting or church gathering, but you'll be seeing a bit more of me and I'll just do my best week by week conferring with Pastor Lois and the worship team and with our moderator, Jeremy, and the church council. I'll do my best to keep you apprised of when I'll be around. Um, but in the meanwhile, thank you. Thank you. God bless you all. I love you all. Gesundheit. <laughs> um, and so, onward. Onward in the name of God. So Dave, bless us with some cantering. Open up your ears. Oh, 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 oh faithful people. Thank you, Reverend Marjorie. Our reading today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. It's a long one. So I invite you to settle in and open your heart to this story about the road to Emmaus. Emmaus. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came upon, came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. 
One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all of this took place. In addition, some of the women in our community amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he was going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it's nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were open, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while, we talked with, while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the 11 and those with them assembled together and saying, it's true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. Here ends the reading. Thank you, Dave. 
you. Hello, Plimis. Hey. This happens to be one of my favorite scriptures. It's so dear to my heart that I selected this scripture for the day of my ordination. Because this scripture resembles life. A long walk, a solitary road. Seven miles, it says, from this when the walkers started to Jerusalem. It takes approximately three hours to walk that distance. I know because I have walked three half marathons and it's taking a long time, a long time to walk the 13.1 miles that is a half marathon. There is an overwhelming weight of grief in these walkers, these followers of Jesus. The scripture tell us that they are overcast. Bible commentaries describe their body language as indicative of grave sadness. There is a saying in Spanish when you are really sad. It says, ni el sol lo calienta, no even the sun warms you up. And so it is evident that they are walking consumed by heaviness in their spirit. And then the resurrected Christ appears at their side to bring them hope and to remind them where their faith their faith is rooted. Because, siblings, <clears throat> the resurrected Christ knows when our lives need him to walk side by side with us and give us a glimpse of his glory. It is interesting, too, in this passage, is the only post-resurrection narrative that established very clearly who has sent Jesus to death. These two speak truth to power when they say the chief priest and rulers handing him over and they crucify him. They understood what their social contest was and who the oppressors were and their siblings, it is important to know who oppresses. Many times we don't call out white supremacy or patriarchy as our oppressors because we are afraid of offending others. It is important to name the forces that keep our brown, black, women, trans, Communities marginalized. Because religious fanatism is disguised with piety, and in these days, Christian white supremacy is used as a tool. And Fanatism can kill you, I know, because when I lived closer as a lesbian, I couldn't think of God's grace bestow me. Those in power who don't question their entrenched beliefs are very dangerous people. Watch out. They often impose their authority based on their fear. And Jesus was a threat to the religious authorities because he represented freedom, redemption for the people of Israel. But in this walk, even Jesus explains to the walkers not to lose faith because in the midst of darkness and hopelessness, God is still acting and prophecy is still being fulfilled. And siblings, this is life. There are moments in our lives where our eyes are closed, 
when circumstances that surround us keep us from seeing God, when our human sadness blinds us, during war and cruelty, it is hard to see God. During sickness and pandemic, it's very hard to see God. When oppressive governments are threatening our basic human rights, it's very hard to see God. When we lost a loved one, we cannot see God. And then something happens when we invite Jesus to dine in with us. Like these two disciples, they didn't let him go and they invite him in with them. And it is in the intimacy of a meal where Jesus breaks bread that they are reminded God was walking with them and they were never alone. And this question moves me always to tears. Where know our hearts burning? We know our hearts burning within us. Our heart knows. Our heart always knows when God is really close, even if our eyes cannot see the divine. Our hearts will be burning when we see people resisting oppression. When black people asking for their humanity not to be override, when black lives matter, our hearts will be burning. When trans Jews push back to legislation that takes away the right to affirming their divine gender expression, our hearts will be ardent. When our senses are known by heaviness, heaviness of a hard situation, I ask us to take a minute, breathe in, and we will connect with the eternal truth deep in our hearts that we are not alone, that Jesus is breaking bread with us. Some of the work we do in Ministerio Latino, and you know this because many of you are supporters of the ministry I have here in this mother church, is to accompany arrive, recently arrived immigrants. Most of them are LGBTQ asylum seekers. When they first come to Ministerio Latino, they are really tired and traumatized. Some of them have been detained by ICE for months. They don't feel safe, and it's hard for them to trust anybody. And it's through being in community that little by little, their sense of safety restores and they start seeing God again. A year ago, <clears throat> our faith community rescued a trans man that was in a very unsafe housing situation. And we were able to secure housing for him and place him in this stable, better situation. And when I first have spoken to him on the phone, his voice was like a mur murmur. He, I could hardly hear him. And as he got to a better place, his voice returned to him. And when I was putting him in a plane to New Jersey, where he was going to go to be um, with people he knew and get a job. He said, I never thought it was going to be a pastor or somebody who claims to be a Christian who was going to help me. Because in Honduras, he had experienced rejection and hate by Christians. The the workers, these em emails, believe me, I was pro trying to pronounce the word for 10 minutes with Google translation this morning. The emails! 
Run, the, the phone says, run. <laughs> but you know who I am, who I'm saying. The Emmaus walkers. Recognize Jesus by the way he broke bread. In that moment, opened their eyes. And I asked myself, how is the world going to recognize we are followers of Jesus? I'm sure you know how to answer this, believe with Others will recognize we follow Jesus when we show up to those in need without questions, without agenda of our, our own to help them out. When our communities embrace everyone as our creed says, you are welcome here entirely and absolutely. The world will know Jesus lives in our hearts when we stand up to injustice in all its forms, racism, homophobia, transphobia. Others will recognize Jesus in us when we provide for the hungry and assist the homeless. And I know Plymouth shows up in many ways as followers of Jesus and that many of you are living testimonies of the love of God. The hearts of those around us will burn because we resemble Jesus and his compassion. We will walk side by side with those who suffer. When I was finishing my last marathon in 2019, the Oakland Running Festival, I could hardly give another step. I was probably 0.5 miles away from finish line, and I was about to sit down and give up. I was about to be done. And I also had fallen at the beginning of the race and f didn't know, but I, I had fractured my wrist. Oh my and all of the sudden, in the last part of, the, of that race, a black runner appeared by my side. He had finished hours ago. <laughs> he, he was fresh. And he was coming back to accompany those people like me who were struggling to finish the last people in the race. And he started joining at my side and started giving me words of reassurance. Go, go. It's almost there. You can make it. You can make it. And as he saw I, I regained the strength to finish, he went to another runner. And he helped me finish. Wow. Jesus will help us finish the walk. And here to end, a poem from Antonio Machado. Last night I was sleeping, I dreamt marvelous error that I had beehive here inside my heart. The golden bees were making white combs and sweet honey from my old failures. Last night I was sleeping, I dreamt marvelous error that a fairy sun was giving light inside my heart. It was fairy because I felt warmth as from earth, and some because it gave light and brought tears to my eyes. Last night, as I slept, I dreamed marvelous error that it was God I had in here inside my heart. Siblings, let's dare to provoke ardent hearts to those who witness Jesus through us. Glory be to Can we thank Pastor Rena again for that beautiful, powerful word? We're going to sing our way into prayer time. It's been a minute since we've done this. What's up with that? 
So we'll imagine ourselves on the Emmaus road with Cleopas and his companion. Lead me, guide me along the way. For if you lead me, I cannot stray. Lord, let me walk each day. So, Plymouth family, we come now to this time of prayer when we share with God and with each other the prayers of our hearts, our deep joys and our deep yearnings, our, our blessings, our concerns. And so I invite you to take a moment in the quiet to gather your prayers. And when you are ready, those of us here in the sanctuary, if you have a prayer that you'd like to share aloud, you can just raise your hand and I'll bring the microphone to you. Family on Zoom, if you have a prayer that you'd like to share, you can write it in the chat and then we will share a few of your prayers. What are your prayers this day, Plymouth family? Oh, Lord, um, there's so much violence and disruption in this world right now, and now the latest is in Sudan. I pray for the families that are there, pray that they get some stability and just stop this ridiculous war between these two generals that are just, you know, just destroying that nation as well as what's going on in Ukraine, what's going on in the United States with the trigger-happy folk. I just, there's so much violence, and I want to still see God in that, and sometimes it's really hard. God, in your grace, hear our prayer. I pray for Bob, and I pray for my neighbor, Angie, who's 83 and has COPD, and she just found out she has a spot on her lung, and I pray that she doesn't suffer from lung cancer. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Um, once again, a prayer of gratitude. It was in this very church with this congregation and this here pastor that I asked a few years to find a home for my mother who was dying. And after the prayer, 
I drove around the corner and indeed found that place, the point at Rockridge at which my mother resided for the last, resided for the last two years of her life. And I told my brother this story yesterday. My brother is 64 and he's on hospice from lots of cancer. And I told him the story, he's not a believer in Christ or God. And he was so touched by the story. And he said, really, that was a straight answer to a prayer. I said, yes, it was. Mm -hmm. So I'm grateful for this here pastor and this wonderful congregation that gave me such a, an uplifting sense of hope and faith that day. And I'm on my way to go visit my brother today. I think I'll be able to get a prayer in with him after that story. God bless you. <laughs> oh, to God be the glory, God of comfort, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, God of justice, God of healing, I want to lift a prayer for a neighbor who lives in the Adams Point area. His name is Hamid al Shawari, who was pistol whipped by three people and his dog as well. The dog had to have a leg amputated. Mr. al Shawari is deaf in one ear and numb on the complete right side of his body. I'm praying we neighbors can put together a GoFundMe. This gentleman has no family or children in this area. He's severely injured. Oh, God of justice, God of peace, God of healing, bring us what we need. Amen. 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 God of mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Spirit, walk with me this week as I prepare for surgery. It's a minor surgery, but I have a lot of trauma around surgery, so mm -hmm. please walk with me and, and I will feel you, everyone here with me. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. God of comfort, God of presence, hear our prayer. Lord, I come before you just asking that you would Provide clarity about what to do. And uh, what I just ask that you would lighten my load um, as there's so much to be done over the next few months. God who makes a way when we can't see the way, hear our prayer. Dear God, I, I bring to you a prayer for our dear, dear friend, Sally, who um, has terrible back problems and um, will be having some tests this week. And I pray that her great sense of humor and her great spirit will get her through these times and decisions she'll have to make. Please walk with her. God of healing, God of comfort and clarity, hear our prayer. And from our family on Zoom, I will share a few prayers. From Jojo Gabuya, please pray for my brother who is still in the ICU suffering from a mild stroke and still cannot talk. From Susan Salverson, prayers for my Aunt Janet, who continues to develop abscesses in her abdomen following a ruptured appendix. From Laura Easley, praying as Denver Public Schools consider bringing public, oh, police officers back into our schools. They look at the data that shows when they removed them three years ago, the disciplinary actions against black and brown male students were lowered dramatically. I pray that we realize that police are not the answer to keep schools safe. And one more continued prayers to my friend Pat Lennox to heal without pain from Yancey Taylor. 
from Carol Hannon, my heart is full of gratitude for those of you who have been praying for my healing from COVID. Thank you. I am getting better. I love you all. There are more, but I will pause there. And I will also lift a prayer for Robin Hill, a member of our church, whose beloved father, Mr. Robert Hill, passed away recently. Prayers of comfort for Robin and all the family as they gather to celebrate his life and to grieve his passing. Holy One, you've heard our prayers. You walk with us every day and always. It's more than seven miles, <laughs> a lot more, but you walk with us. We pray for your healings of mind and body and spirit, for ourselves, for our loved ones, for our country, for the world. And we also pray for the eyes to see the healings that are now taking place miracles of every day and we are thankful for those we pray for the wisdom and for the courage to tackle the grave challenges of injustice to our brothers and sisters and to the earth itself Yet we also pray for the eyes to see and celebrate the amazing work of your justice saints, the Kings, the Gandhis, the Ginsburgs, that have come before and in essence are with us always. We pray to lift our temptation our temptation towards despair and to give us the eyes to see the beauty and joy of your work in our lives. The beauty of the night sky, the joy of a kind word, the joy of a newborn smile. And we are thankful for all these things. In the spirit of Jesus, who walks with us and among us, join me now in the Lord's Prayer. Our Creator God, who art in heaven, Hallowed be this day. Our kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
when Israel was in Egypt land, let my people go. Oppress so hard they could not stand. Let my people go. Go.
why I give to Plymouth. I was so very thankful when Reverend Marjorie introduced us to Plymouth a near 15 years ago. It feels key to me to be part of a community of fellow travelers on this path of life through times of sorrow. in times of joy, that this community be faith-based and justice-focused. It is such a great gift for me to being just that, my beloved spouse by my side, my beloved mother, 93, on Zoom with here, us here today, with each and all of you. Thank you so. That is why I give. I just want to say one of the reasons that I give to Plymouth is this amazing, amazing music. Thank you, Shell. That was, that was so incredible. Um, when I think of Plymouth, I think of an oasis in storms, real community, real collaboration, real care, inclusivity, social justice, the multitude of Plymouth Saints who make this all work every single day, and Reverend Marjorie. There are four ways to give. For details, please turn to the last page of your bulletin. Thank you. Thank you, Lee and Ida, so very much. We come now to this table. We come now to this table where the Holy One is the host and we are all the welcome guests. Now, in some traditions, this is not so much a table of welcome as a table of proof. You have to come and like prove some stuff. This is the table of judgment in some traditions. But in our tradition, in this church, this is the table of grace. This is the table of love. And everyone is welcome here. No one can be excluded, no one can be expelled. Everyone is welcome here. And so the one, the one who was full of God's love gathered at this table to celebrate the Passover meal with his friends. And during that meal, Jesus took bread and he blessed it and he broke it like this. And then when supper was finished, Jesus took the cup and he he poured wine. I need someone to be my hands. Thank you, Paul. I need someone to be my hands. Thank you. And so what Jesus said to his friends is he said, this bread is like my body. And he said, this, this is the cup of love. And he said to his friends, when you eat of this bread and when you drink of this cup, remember me, remember me. And so we come here, Holy One, to remember you and to thank you for showing us how to love. Put your love in our hearts 
strengthen us that we may extend that love to everyone. Dear ones, these are the gifts of God for the people of God, all of us. And in a moment, those of us here in the sanctuary will get to enjoy them. Everyone on Zoom, and I'm going to invite you, if you're here in the sanctuary, you can pantomime this. So take whatever bread or crackers or cookies you have family on Zoom, hold it in one hand, and then place your other hand above it and say, this is a gift of God's good earth. Say that, everybody. It is blessed. I am blessed. Yes. And then everyone on Zoom, you can set that down for a minute. Lee is going to continue to hold the bread for us. And now take up whatever cup you have and putting one hand above it, say, this is a gift of God's good earth. It is blessed. I am blessed. Amen. Amen. So blessed, beloved people of God, if you're on Zoom, go ahead and enjoy the gifts. If you're here in the sanctuary, I invite you to rise now and let's form our closing circle. And everyone on Zoom, you go ahead and enjoy your communion gifts and we're gonna, we're gonna serenade you. and join this little circle and maybe you want to you can you can join hands or you can join arms like this like you know civil rights movement style and let's join in singing may the blessings of God rest upon you may God speak Serena's going to offer the benediction, and those of you who'd like to receive communion will come and serve out in the courtyard. Um, two quick things before Pastorina offers the benediction. Here, Pastorina, why don't you? Oh, yes, yeah, there were a couple of announcements. Brother Stephen Mark Thomas over here is helping to direct a fabulous production of Ain't Misbehaving at the Lesher Arts Center in Walnut Creek. And he has six complimentary tickets. More? Bum rush him. <laughs> Get a ticket. Don't miss the show. Don't miss the show. Um, were there any other announcements? Going once, going twice? All right. So, Pastor Rena. Be blessed, dear people of God. Go from here, giving, giving testimony so many around you feel the burning of the divine presence. Amen. 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 Okay, so we'll see you in the courtyard to receive communion. Everyone on Zoom. Dave Mayotki will bless you with a jazz standard. You'll get to visit for a while, and then when you come back, Dave Mayotki will bless you with a jazz standard. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Go. My mind's a whirl, all the songs that are coming in. What will I do? What will I do? Here's a song that I... I wrote out in a lead sheet the other day. I heard Peggy Lee sing it, and then all these other people too, on YouTube. Michelle Legrand wrote the music, and the Bergmans, Alan and Marilyn, wrote the lyrics. My favorite, of course, of all these versions, Sarah Vaughan, uh, Carmen McRae, Frank Sinatra, but the one I liked the best was Tony Bennett, 
singing with Michel Legrand himself, conducting this great song. What are you doing the rest of your life? North and south and east and west of your life. I have only one request of your life that you spend it all with me. All the seasons and the times of your days, all the nickels and the dimes of your days, let the reasons and the rhymes of your days all begin and end with me. face in every kind of light, in fields of dawn and forests of the night, and when you stand before the candles on a cake, oh let me be the one to hear the silent wish you make, those tomorrows waiting deep in your eyes. In the world of love you keep in your eyes I'll awaken what's asleep in your eyes It may take a kiss or two Through all of my life Summer, winter, spring and fall of my life All I ever will recall of my life is all of my life with you. I want to see your face in every kind of light, in fields of dawn and forests of the night. And when you stand before the candles on a cake, Oh, let me be the one to hear that silent wish you make. Those tomorrows waiting deep in your eyes. In the world of love you keep in your eyes. I'll awaken what's asleep in your eyes. It may take a kiss or two. All of my life, summer, winter, spring, and fall of my life, all I ever will recall of my life is all of my life with you. Now it's time to say goodbye. Now it's time to say goodbye to the Plymouth family and everyone else. P L Y M O U T H U C C Plymouth Church. Plymouth Church. What a great now it's time to say goodbye to this Plymouth family. Have a good week. See you next week. P L Y. Time to count down. Five, four, three, two, one. Mwah. <laughs>